Hi, and welcome to another Ann Arbor Sewing Center Sew It Yourself project. Today we will be showing you how to make a flip and stitch bean bag toss game. This game is perfect for your next backyard party or even a Saturday morning tailgate. What you will need for this simple project is a cutting mat, rotary cutter, ruler, thread, point turner, permanent marker, fusible webbing. Specifically for the floor mat, you will need three quarters of a yard of main block fabric, a quarter of a yard of accent fabric, three quarters of a yard of backing fabric, batting, for the bean bags a half of a yard of main fabric, an eighth of a yard of accent fabric, and a bag of dried beans. For the applique in this project, we have provided free printouts in our pattern. The free printable pattern can be located on our website. To get started with the flip and stitch floor mat, cut five 12 and half inch squares from your main fabric. Cut four three and a half inch by 12 and a half inch rectangles from your accent fabric. Cut five 12 and a half inch squares from your batting and cut four three and a half inch by 12 and a half inch rectangles from your batting. For the backing of your floor mat, cut your backing fabric into two strips, 12 and a half inch by width of fabric. You will need to cut off the selvage and seam the middle. Your backing will need to be cut and sewn to 12 and a half inches by 71 inches. Set aside for later. To get started piecing your floor mat, lay one 12 and a half inch square right side up on top of a 12 and a half inch square piece of batting. On one side of the square, lay a three and a half inch by 12 and a half inch rectangle right side down. On top of this rectangle, lay a piece of batting. Sew down this side of your sandwich using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If you do not have a walking foot or dual feed, you may want to use a half of an inch seam allowance to help limit your fabric and batting from shifting. Your mat will just be a little bit smaller. After sewing, open up your project and finger press. To continue creating the top of your floor mat, place another 12 and a half inch square of your main fabric face down on your finger pressed project. Next, place a 12 and a half inch square of batting on top of this. Sew down this side using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Continue this flip and stitch style alternating sewing in a square and sewing in a rectangle. Once the top of your floor mat is complete, trim off the uneven ends and place it right side up. On top of this, place your backing fabric right side down. Pin along the edges and sew around the entire mat using a half of an inch seam allowance. Be sure to leave about a three inch opening in order to turn your project. After sewing, Cut off all four corners of your floor mat. Be sure not to cut off any of your seams. Turn the project right side out and iron. After your floor mat is nicely pressed, top stitch around the entire mat using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Make sure to catch the opening in your quarter of an inch. It is now time to trace your printed out numbers onto the fusible webbing. When tracing, make sure the numbers are reversed. Now, iron the fusible web to your accent fabric and cut out your numbers. Once you have finished cutting, iron the numbers onto your floor mat. Be sure to use an applique pressing sheet to ensure your iron stays clean from the fusible webbing. After ironing, sew on the numbers using a zigzag, applique, or straight stitch. In addition to securing your numbers, this applique will also help to secure the backing to the floor mat. After you have finished with the applique, we are now ready to complete the game by making the bean bags. To get started with the bean bags, cut eight six and a half inch squares of your main bean bag fabric. Now trace four stars onto your fusible webbing and iron the fusible webbing onto the accent fabric. Cut out the stars and iron them on to four of the eight six and a half inch squares. Sew around the stars 
using a zigzag, applique, or straight stitch. Next, place one appliqued square on top of one plain square, right sides together. Sew around the squares using a half of an inch seam allowance. Make sure to leave an opening to turn. Trim off the corners of your square, making sure not to cut into the stitching line. Turn your bean bags right side out, and to create the most precise corners, use a point turner. Make sure not to pierce through the fabric. After ironing your bean bags, pour one cup of beans into each bean bag's opening. Being careful not to spill out any beans, top stitch around the entire bean bag using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And that's it. Your flip and stitch bean bag toss game is complete. If you would like to follow along to this video tutorial with a free printable pattern, visit us on our website. On behalf of Ann Arbor Sewing Center, we hope you enjoyed this Sew It Yourself project. Please be sure to share your creations on our Facebook page. We love to see all of the unique theme variations. We hope you have a wonderful day, and as always, happy sewing!